You watched all the YouTube videos and finally ordered your own Bamboo Lab A1 or A1 Mini. Maybe you've already received it, unboxed it, installed it, and now you're sitting there thinking, what should I print first? And does the order of the way I print things matter? And actually, I didn't order that much filament, so it's very important that I don't waste anything on the wrong products and only print the things that I would actually use. Those are all very, very great questions. And I know because I also had those exact same questions. So in this video, I basically just want you to learn from my mistakes and see how we can save both filament, time and money, especially during your first very, very precious prints. And as always, I want to give you the fastest, shortest answer possible right away. And this time you will find it all down in the description below where I have links to all the different designs that I will recommend you in this video. And if you want a little bit longer answer, then you can just jump to this timestamp right away since that's when we will actually will start talking about these different models and these different designs. Because before we get there, I do want to make sure that I bring everyone up to speed since I do tend to make this the most beginner friendly 3D printing YouTube channel that has ever existed and if you agree with this mission then please support me by subscribing to this channel if you haven't already because I know myself it was super confusing especially watching these videos even before you have received your first 3d printer so basically how you get these 3mf or STL files into bamboo studio and if you have no idea what the difference between STL and 3mf or what even bamboo studio is then I highly recommend to watch my previous videos here on the channel to bring you up to speed before watching this video you will most likely go on to a place called maker world which is bamboo labs own little library of these different models you have a lot of other ones as well that I've also talked about in previous videos and from here you will just simply first choose a design but all these designs also comes with their own different profile and this is where things can be pretty confusing so here in maker world we have all these different 3d models for example this reusable hexagon style bamboo spool and of course you can also print these spools that you put the filaments on which I thought was just mind-blowing the first time I realized that but something else that kind of like started to uh, at least uh, damage my mind was here on the right side we also do have these different profiles of this one single 3d model and very simply put these profiles are the saved settings from within bamboo studio uh, which again is the slicing software of your bamboo lab printer so for example the first top profile is usually the one from the designer himself or herself. So in this case, we can see that the designer intended this to be printed in ASA, which is not that great news for us A1 or A1 mini owners, since you do need an enclosed printer such as the X1Z or the new H2D in order to print with this specific material. But if we do check these other profiles, we can see that there's another profile here printed in PLA, in this case red PLA, but we can of course change the color in Bamboo Studio later. Now, I don't personally know if this PLA version is any good, but here we can also see that this specific profile has 700 reviews with a rating of 4.9 stars. So I would say that most likely this is a very, very good PLA alternative to the original ASA version. And one more thing I quickly want to mention as well, that at least I thought was super confusing the first time I jumped into Maker World, and that is that the information you usually see in these profiles, for example, 0.3 millimeter layer, that is just the the height of the actual layer of the print and it's not the size of the nozzle. Almost every single one of these prints do have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle profile and if we want to confirm that then we simply check here. We hover over this specific profile where we can have a little bit more information including the total filaments used for this specific profile and we can also see the exact nozzle that this profile was designed for. And here you can also see the total number of plates within this profile which in this case are two different plates since this design is made out of two different parts so you can actually detach the side and then put the filaments in between and something else that you might see in case the designer has to really optimize these profiles or just some ridiculous like 50 plus hours printing times that is most likely the designer has included several versions of the print within the same project in Bamboo Studio. So you can actually choose which one of all the plates 
you are going to print. So it makes it very easy for you to just click one without having to download different files. But it is very confusing when you see that first like enormous printing time, but actually you only need to print like maybe 25 or 50% of those plates in order to have an entire 3D printed model. So now I think we're all caught up when it comes to how we actually do download and choose the right profiles on the maker world. So all we have to do now is to do all that tedious research to find the best and most efficient printing profile. But since you are lucky enough to watch my videos, all you have to do is just continue watching and then I have already done all that hard and tedious work for you. So the first print I do recommend are these hexagon key handles. It says for Bamboo Lab X1 and P1, but these fit perfectly together with those hexagon keys that you have gotten with your brand new Bamboo Lab A1 or A1 Mini. And I think this print is just genius. First of all, because it's just so fast. Second reason is that you will very much need these tools as your 3D printing career continues. And the third one I think is super, super cool is that this one actually has an integrated pause in the profile. So the printer will automatically stop and then you will actually put these hexagon keys in the middle of the print and then just continue printing and you will have the handle integrated into this tool. This really like kickstarted my whole like 3D printing creativity and I'm, I'm just very very, very grateful that I got to experience that. Um, now maybe I ruined the experience for you because you will hear about it here before you're doing it yourself but I think you get my point. Next up is another very tiny and short print which I think is just crucial for your first day being a 3D printer owner uh, because the only thing you want to do is just to, to print new things all the time. Plus if you did actually follow through with the entire installation process and you did your maintenance and cleaning, uh, you do realize that you do want a little less messier way of actually doing your next monthly maintenance on your machine. But since this most likely was your first multicolor print you did on your Bamboo Lab A1, A1 Mini together with the AMS Lite, you also realize that there will be a lot more of this poop and waste after you have changed colors a few times. So you will be very, very inclined of printing your own hoop basket or waste basket or whatever you want to call it and this is actually the first print that I reprinted because I regretted this design. Don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this specific profile and it fits perfectly on the printer and it has a very, very minimalistic approach. The only problem is that if you are actually gonna continue printing multicolor prints, this is how much uh, poop and waste you can get from one single print if it changes colors a lot. But something that can be a little bit confusing for new 3D printers, especially for this new 3D printer is why and how this poop or waste is created. So basically the machine is putting out all these wastes every single time the printer is changing color. I know that this sounds very straightforward, but it gets a little bit more confusing. So we have two examples right here. One is a very, very colorful vase with four different colors in total, including the, the white lines here. Uh, and then we have a two color Taiwan bear. Which one do you think has the most color changes? Yeah. I don't know what you guessed, but uh, I assumed that it was going to be this kind of design, but the nozzle is only changing colors for every new color on that same layer. So this design actually only has a few color changes, which means that it doesn't have that much like waste and that not that much poop from the machines because it doesn't have to change colors that often. But the important thing to note here is that this bear has more layers that has more than one color per layer. Yeah, I think that's a good way to summarize it. So if you do want to get into multi-color design, just know that both of these are possible and that they both turn out absolutely amazing. But just keep in mind that this little guy right here is actually, I think, wasting more material than there is material inside of this bear. So yeah, that is something that you should definitely be aware of before you start designing as well in order to, to save some of this filament and also to save your, your precious money in the end. So if you do want to go with, I would say any kind of like multicolor, then this is the, the size that you need because uh, this poop is just not enough. It's just way too small for having any kind of multicolor prints. 
okay, I now realize how unnecessary that was. I just did it for dramatic effect. So I hope you appreciate it and do like and subscribe to this channel. Another great first day print is also this scrape grip. So basically you get this knife blade with your brand new A1 printer and then just print this grip and design it as you want yourself and then just print this out and then you use this in order to scrape off all your future prints. But this has been very much covered in a bunch of other YouTube videos. So I think that we're gonna save this video for maybe a little bit more important information. Next up might be your first overnight print. This absol absolutely amazing toolbox that is print in place, meaning that this is how it ends up after you printed it. It does come with a little middle layer here that, that prints next to it. And you can just put that in after you're, you've printed it. But it just comes here with, with hinges. It has locks. It has multicolor design. It is just absolutely amazing. And again, just like with these first little like key handles, I was just blown away by the fact that you can just print something like this on a machine like that in your own like bedroom you know and just the fact that you you wake up you go back to your printer and then you have like an, an actual product that you would have like actually spent money on buying in a store that didn't exist yesterday when you went to sleep and it was just like created in your own apartment i don't know that, that is still after like one month, that moment is just like the most amazing feeling in my entire 3D printing career so far, except when you subscribe to my channel, of course. I, I just hope you get to experience that because that was so amazing. And, and I'm just so happy with, with this purchase. And I, I also hope I get to have many, many more experiences just like this one. But one experience that I do not want you to have is the feeling of almost running out of filaments. But that's when you want to have these uh, filament estimator or whatever they're called, which you just put on the spool to just estimate how much filament you actually have left. This is also actually something else that I reprinted and that I want you to pay extra attention to when it comes to the profile that you pick. Because if we do look at this photo, this photo does not match this exact profile. Because as you can see, the photo actually has two colors, whereas this specific profile, which is still by the designer, only has one. So it's extremely difficult to actually read out out and see how much filament is actually left. And right below it, you do have one for the AMS. And you can see that on this symbol right here and that you also have two different colors on this specific profile. And speaking about the importance of different profiles, here we can also see that although this spool is actually a little bit too big for A1 Mini, there is an A1 Mini solution to this spool as well that has the same internal dimensions. So it is compatible with the AMS Lite or the AMS but that has a slightly smaller size. And I think this is something that most potential A1 or A1 mini owners may not realize. So if you are considering if you should get an A1 or an A1 mini, then please go on Maker World, look through these profiles that you now know how to read. Uh, and then you can see that most of these profiles actually also has an A1 mini version. The only difference is that there might be a smaller version or it will be separated into more plates. So we will take longer time to print but you will end up having more or less the exact same print once you're done assembling everything. Next up is literally the biggest mistake I've ever done in my 3D printing career. And that is this uh, plate caddy, I believe it's called. This profile is perfect. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It, it definitely deserves a like and it is uh, great but it's not the best. So the problem I had that I wanted to solve with this print was just a place to put my plates. And it works perfectly. There's again, absolutely nothing wrong with this specific design uh, other than it's 230 grams of filament, which is like almost like a quarter of a spool, which is a lot during your first couple of, of prints. So if I can give you my personal recommendation, then I highly recommend to print this much smaller plate holder instead. Now, this does only hold four plates, whereas this other bigger one do have space for five. But I do think that this is much easier to just slide in and out the different plates compared to this one that kind of has a tendency to uh, not be that smooth sometimes. And before we finish this video, I also want to take a few seconds 
seconds to just thank you all so much for subscribing and watching my content, watching all my videos to the end, because now we actually have been monetized on this channel, which makes me so more motivated to actually see a future on this channel and continue making videos that you hopefully want to watch every single week. And with that also comes the super thanks function and the membership section as well. If you do want to support me even more to help me buy new filaments to test and just supporting me a little bit extra so I can continue making these videos, testing all different kinds of things and basically just do all the mistakes for you so you don't have to go through that. And speaking of which, I actually am gonna be borrowing an H2D, the brand new flagship model from Bamboo Lab entire next week from April 21st to uh, 25th, uh, Taiwan time, GMT plus eight. And another secret just between you and me is that I actually do have a brand new X1C in my living room as well, because I, I cannot fit it here on my studio. So during at least next week, I do have the A1s, the X1C and the H2D to do all different kinds of comparisons. So please do let me know if there's anything that you wanna see, just leave a comment and, and let me know what we should test. And we have until April 25th, Taiwan time to, uh, to figure everything out together. But I also want to explain the membership section moving forward as well, because I will actually not put any exclusive content there at all, at least not any educational or like useful information, because I don't know, I'm from Sweden and I grew up with education being like 100% free. So it just does not make sense to me that people would have to pay in order to get access to like education and knowledge. Like it, it, it just feels so wrong. And that's also why I like to make these YouTube videos because it's just, it's free to watch and I don't want to hide anything or give like early access to members because they're paying. So I basically just see the membership section as a way for hopefully some of you at least to, to just support me a little bit more so I can purchase different types of filaments and, and different things to try and to just make all the mistakes that you don't want to make basically. I did have to select some perks in order to activate the membership and I did pick uh, prioritized replies, which is true, but I also do hope that I will be able to reply to every single one of you, especially if you have any questions and you do actually want to, to know something from me. So yes, prioritize replies, but hopefully every single one will, will get a reply. So please don't feel like you need to join the membership in order to get everything out from this channel, because every single one will get everything from this channel. Hopefully that makes sense and I just want to be as transparent as possible. But regardless if you're joining the membership or if you're subscribing or if you maybe give me a super thanks, I just want to thank you so much for watching this entire video, <clears throat> even if you maybe skipped a few parts here and there. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with Alice in like, ends with S, and subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one.